All right, there will be grades, but we do have a pop quiz for you. Do you know South Texas geography? Better yet, do you know how that geography affects our weather? No homework here either. No. For this case that explains, we tapped meteorologist Justin Horn, who is really into maps, both in passion and profession. He breaks out his compass and ran McNally and does a little myth busting too. Can you tell me what this is? What is that a shape of? I'll give you a hint, it's a county. I can, is it Bear County? It is Bear County. Is it a state or are we looking at a county? It's a county. Yeah, see. <laughs> it makes it more difficult, right? It does make it more difficult. Can you tell me where Bear County is? Oh, uh, okay. Is it San Antonio? It's like, yeah, it's over here-ish. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here? Very close. Mm -hmm. Could you show me where the Edwards Plateau is? Edwards Plateau. Yes. I believe the Edwards Plateau is uh, right up in here. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. So, curvy area, correct? Yeah, that's right. You nailed it. Yeah, you got it. Second try. That was perfect. All right. Can you show me where Frio County is on this map? No, I cannot. Can you show me on this map where Frio County is? So, if I were to ask you where the Texas Hill Country is, could you show me here on the map? Um, like, let's see, like over here? Like, yeah. That's where yeah. our... Yeah, that's right. So not everyone knows geography as well as us meteorologists do, and that's okay. We're kind of weird like that. True story, when I was a kid, I read the entire atlas and once memorized every country and its capital. But for those of you who don't have that much time on your hands, we thought we'd touch on some of the more important geographical and geological features that South Texas has to offer. And the feature we thought we'd start with is the most important of all, the Balcones Escarpment. The escarpment, or at least the edge of the escarpment, which I'm standing on now here at Government Canyon State Natural Area, is part of a fault zone that runs through northwestern Bear County. It more or less splits our viewing area in half. To the north, we have the higher elevation in the hill country. To the south, we have the coastal plains. And this feature really explains a lot about why South Texas is the way it is. So this is a major uplift that happened about 25 to 24 million years ago where we actually had a big chunk of central Texas lifted up about 1,500 feet. The boundary of the escarpment is U-shaped, featuring porous limestone formed by an ancient ocean. It's a boundary that helped create the aquifer and subsequently prolific springs. Without the springs, you would not have San Antonio. See, I told you the escarpment was important. The sudden rise in elevation around 1,500 feet in Bear County alone also makes a difference when it comes to weather. We'll discuss that in a bit. But it's also why the Hill Country exists. Speaking of, what is the Hill Country? And how is it different from the Edwards Plateau that you hear us mention so often in weather? The Hill Country is just part of the Edwards Plateau. It's sort of the eastern edge of, of that uh, plateau. And it really encompasses the that edge, plus the Balcones Escarpment coming down into San Antonio. Which brings us to I-35. It's a major important interstate. Notice how it seems to line up with the edge of the Balcones Escarpment. The I-35 corridor is actually just on the eastern side of the Edwards Plateau. So instead of building up and over the plateau, they just went around it. That, and going back to the importance of those springs along the escarpment, major cities formed right along its edge, where the water was, and the interstate connects them. And since I-35 serves as a visual boundary of the edge of the escarpment, we often use it in weather to feature our different climate zones. You'll hear us say things like, those east of I-35 have the best chances for storms. Along those same lines, Highway 90, which runs west to east, is useful too. This geography puts us at a unique crossroads. San Antonio is at the point of three different major ecoregions. The South Texas Thornbrush, which basically starts in San Antonio and goes south to the valley. That's more or less an extension of the Chihuahua Desert, which creeps in from the west. Think hot and dry. And then we have the Hill Country, which goes from west of town uh, towards Kerbal, Sonora. It's the elevated portion of our viewing area we mentioned earlier. And then we have the, the plains, the central prairie. That's the flatter part of South Central Texas, closest to the coast. It features higher humidity, more rain, and more vegetation. So you drive any direction and you've got a different scene. So with all that in mind, let's do some myth busting, fact or fiction, when it comes to geography and what it means for our weather. Yes, clouds do bank up against the escarpment, occasionally making it cloudy in San Antonio, but sunny in the hill country. It can also sometimes help to develop showers. 
No, there's not a dome over San Antonio. Any sort of heat island effect has no bearing on storms moving through or avoiding the city, despite recent claims. Yes, those east of I-35 often have better chances of rain because they are closer to the Gulf of Mexico and therefore have better, deeper moisture. No, valleys and terrain have little to no impact on tornadoes. They develop and move as they please. Yes, the Serranias del Burro Mountains west of Del Rio in Mexico do have an effect on our weather, mostly when it comes to helping give lift to big storms in the summer that cross into Texas. No, there's no one favorite area in San Antonio that gets hail over the other. However, yes, geography does play a role in winter weather with Northern Bear County, especially north of 1604, having a much better shot at seeing wintry weather than those in Southern Bear County. And this is why being a meteorologist in South Texas is so fun. Lastly, let's talk about counties. These boundaries are more political than they are geographical, but useful when we're describing where a thunderstorm is located. It's always a good idea to know where your county is located on a map. We use them a lot in weather, especially when it comes to warnings. And that's South Texas geography in a nutshell. And it's why reading an atlas isn't quite as boring as you might think. For Kids That Explains, I'm meteorologist Justin Horn. He read the whole thing. Somehow that does not surprise it me. It doesn't surprise me either. Yeah. All right, so what do you want to see us explain? Scan this QR code, go straight to the KSAT Explains page where you can find all of our coverage and a place to send in your own ideas. We'll be right back. An American soldier in North Korean custody for crossing into that country without authorization. Well, he has been facing military disciplinary actions, apparently. Could be why he made the move. Travis King had just been released from a South Korean prison where he was being held on assault charges, was set to return to Fort Bliss in El Paso. King instead joined a tour of a Korean border village and then ran across the border into North Korea. Not clear how military officials lost track of King after his prison release. The United Nations working to release King from custody. Back here in the U.S., former President Donald Trump says he's been told he's the target of the Department of Justice investigation into Republican efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Trump says he got that target letter on Sunday night. Now, these letters can sometimes signal an indictment. He got a similar letter ahead of being charged last month in a separate classified document investigation. Special counsel Jack Smith is investigating attempts by Trump and his allies to block the transfer of power to President Joe Biden in the days leading up to the January 6th Capitol riot. All right, check this out. This is what people in Phoenix saw before they went to sleep last night. A massive dust storm rolled through the desert and an orange evening haze came along with it. It happened in the middle of a record breaking stretch of heat there in Phoenix. That city is under an excessive heat warning through Friday and today was the 19th day in a row with at least 110 degree heat. Ugh. Yikes. I have some relatives that live in Phoenix. I know oh, yeah. dust can be a problem there. Oh, yeah. Not you, usually, you know, that's kind of unusual. It seems. Well, they can get some pretty big dust storms. And yeah. part of it is, is you get these thunderstorms that pop up in the desert and then all the rain evaporates on its way down to the ground, creating a very big downdraft. And then that whoosh, puff of air picks up the dust and just spreads it. I mean, you can watch these walls of dust sometimes. It's fascinating, technically called a haboob. 105 right now by nine o'clock, 96 midnight. We're at 86 and tomorrow morning, 78 degrees at 6 a.m. We're gonna talk about the dust that affects us. That is the Saharan dust and when that should thicken up a little bit in just a bit. A man is fighting for his life in a hospital after he was shot several times in his truck. This happened at the Kennedy Arms Apartments on the west side this morning. There were no witnesses to that shooting, and police say they did not have any information on a possible suspect. Police are still searching for two suspects after a man shot on the side of New Laredo Highway overnight. Investigators say the victim parked on the side of the road with his hazard lights on when a suspect pulled up, shot him, drove away. Moments later, a second suspect took off in the victim's car. Police have yet to release any suspect information. 
San Antonio police also still searching for two men. They say stole a truck and then stole money out of an ATM. A witness called police around five this morning and said they saw the burglars use a truck and a chain to rip open that machine on the west side. The stolen truck has since been recovered and fire investigators are looking into a fire that destroyed nearly half of a home near I 10 and El Monte Boulevard. Thankfully, no one home. Firefighters rescued two dogs that were inside down power line near the back of the house, but it's unclear if that's what sparked the fire. We've talked about it a few times, but it's still out there. So let's talk about what's going on with the Saharan dust at this point. Yeah, we haven't even seen the worst of it yet. Oh, we haven't even seen much at yeah. all, really. And so if you have any sniffles or allergies, it's not from the Saharan air layer. And keep in mind, indoor allergens can sometimes be a little more potent than some of the environmental allergens. All we have is mold that's light right now. Be sure to change the filters in your HVAC. That reminds me, it's been a little too long. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at our Saharan dust. And there's a little bit down deep south Texas and over the valley, and especially over the Gulf of Mexico with some of the highest concentrations, especially out in the Atlantic. Now that thicker and that dense layer of dust is barreling westward, headed our way. It's going to make it to the Gulf of Mexico this weekend. We may have very light amounts periodically, but by this time next week is when you're likely to notice it a little bit more. And this should be the most dust we've had in our air so far this summer. We'll have the moderate, light to moderate amounts of that Saharan dust in place by Tuesday, Wednesday time frame of next week. So I know we're looking far away, but that's the latest forecast from the NASA Geos model that, that we use there. All right, here's a look at our satellite and radar and the storm trend is arcing or the storm track is arcing up and around that heat high severe weather parts of the mid south Memphis area and now eastward. This storm track is going to modify a little bit in the days ahead. I wouldn't say it really favors us, but it's better than nothing going forward by Thursday, Friday, the high split and across the entire southern US. So pushing down on everybody, but then it builds again over the four corners and that shifts our steering flow and that storm tracker on the edge of that upper high could get a little closer to us. I just don't think it's really going to impact us so much. It opens the door. No, it cracks open the door for disturbances. Basically, we're not swinging it wide open. We're just cracking the door open for a disturbance or two and maybe a little bit of rain making energy. Our odds though only 10 to 20% chance of a few showers Saturday, Sunday and Monday. So we're talking very limited opportunities, especially the diurnal convection that we can see in those situations. So not a whole lot there. 104. The temperature right now, that's our high for the day. Dew point is 61, so it feels like it's two degrees warmer than the air temperature. We're seeing the typical trend that we would normally see in this time of year with the dew points falling off a bit in the afternoon. Port SA 58, Converse 56. That helps mitigate the heat index, whereas we did not get this afternoon dew point drop back in June and even the first week of July, which gave us those oppressive and in some cases record breaking heat indices. Tomorrow the dew point trend is going to be the same. Very sticky and oppressive dew points in the 70s at sunrise and then into the afternoon the drier air mixes down and that drops the dew point closer to 60. Once that dew point 60 or less, the heat index is non-existent and actually if you calculate it, the heat index is lower than the air temp then. Ironic, right? 102 Rio Medina right now, Bernie at 99 along with Rock Springs and some 90s closer to the Gulf Coast tomorrow. We start the day at 78, a little bit of cloud cover early. Otherwise, another sunny, bright day. 104 the high. The record is 106. So we tied the record today. I think we'll come a few degrees shy tomorrow, but still triple digits. That's the trend. Despite dropping a few degrees, 101 Sunday, Monday, it's still hot. It's still July. It's still <laughs> triple digits and above average. You planted a little uh, Easter egg in that forecast for me. I got it. <laughs> you did? Yeah. My favorite weather term. <laughs> Diurnal convection. <laughs> Anytime. It's fun to say. No, it is. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Can't you tell? I can tell you're enjoying it. We'll be right back with the buzz. Diurnal convection. Some police officers in North Richland Hills, Texas, being hailed as heroes for rescuing Roxy the Rottweiler. 
from underneath a shed. Roxy believed to have gotten wedged in here after chasing a possum in her family's yard. Body cam video shows the officers prying away those floorboards, but Roxy looked She's happy about it. She's right smiling. Yeah. They got her out from under those floorboards in about 30 minutes, and police say other than getting a little worked up from being stuck in there, she is doing just fine. So that's good. It is good. <laughs> An Australian man and his dog are back on dry land after being stranded at sea for two months. A Mexican tuna boat found Timothy Shattuck and his dog Bella in a catamaran 1,200 miles from land in the Pacific Ocean. Wow. Yeah. The crew gave them food and water as soon as they were rescued. Shattuck says his time at sea was miserable. He needs some rest, but otherwise he's okay. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Uh, Taylor Swift yes. just keeps making history. Her newest album release, Speak Now, Taylor's version, the superstar's 12th number one album, the most by any female artist ever. And what did I say? I feel like we're living in With the world, Taylor's, world, Taylor's yeah. version. She breaks the old record of 11 number one albums held by Barbara Streisand. Taylor Swift is also the first living artist in nearly six decades with four albums in the top 10 all at the same time. I didn't know Barbara Streisand held the previous record. I didn't either. Interesting. But no longer. Yeah. The San Antonio Zoo successfully hatched 27 horned lizards this season and says more could be on the way soon. The reptile once was rampant in Texas, but has disappeared in the last 50 years because of invasive species and habitat loss. Horn frogs. Mm -hmm. This effort is part of the Texas Horned Lizard Reintroduction Project started in 2017. Since then, more than 150 horned lizards have been released back into the wild in this newest batch set to be released later this fall. We'll be right back. That's all our time. Thanks for watching the news at six. See you back here on the night beat at 10.